Hi, welcome to Math Defined with me, Mrs. C. And today's video is practice dividing a fraction with a mixed number. And if you haven't done so already, please become a subscriber today. Your support allows me to continue making videos just for you. Now, this video is actually a part two video with my first video about learning how to divide a fraction with a mixed number. So you might wanna check that video out as well. So let's get going. All right, our first practice problem is 5 eighths divided by two and 1 12th. And let's go ahead and put those four easy steps that we talked about in the first video lesson about dividing fractions and mixed numbers. So I have a mixed number of 2 and 1 12th in this division problem, and I can only divide a fraction with another fraction. So that means that I'm going to have to take 2 and 1 12th, that mixed number, and I'm going to need to write that as an improper fraction before I can divide. So let's go ahead and keep this 5 eighths because it's already a fraction. Let's bring down the division sign, and now let's turn 2 and 1 12th into an improper fraction. And we do that by multiplying the denominator to the whole number. So 12 times 2 is 24. Then we're going to add the numerator. So 24 plus 1 is 25. So my improper fraction will be 25 over 12. And now I have a fraction being divided by another fraction. So that's going to allow me to use the keep, change, flip strategy that I talked about in my previous video. So we're going to keep 5 eighths. We're going to change the division to multiplication, and we're going to flip 25 over 12 to its reciprocal of 12 over 25. And so remember, whenever we flip those fractions, it's called taking the reciprocal of the fraction. All right, now before I multiply these two fractions, I'm going to go ahead and look for cross-canceling opportunities. Cross-canceling allows me to basically simplify my fractions, making the numbers smaller and easier to work with before I start multiplying. All right, so to look for those opportunities, I look for a diagonal numerator and denominator. And when I look at the numerator of 5 and its de um, diagonal denominator of 25, I can see that those two numbers do share a common factor of 5. So I'm going to go ahead and divide each by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. Then I look at 8 and 12, and I do see that they also share a common factor. Now I know that 8 does not go into 12, but the number 4 goes into both 12 and 8, so the number 4 is a factor of both. So I'm going to go ahead and divide each of that numerator and the denominator by 4. So 12 divided by 4 gives me 3, and 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. And you see now I have much smaller numbers to multiply. So cross-canceling is really helpful if you have the opportunity to do that. All right, so now we're going to multiply our numerators. So we're going to multiply 1 times 3 is 3. Then we're going to multiply our denominators of 2 times 5, which gives me 10. And then our last step is just to make sure that our answer is in simplest form. And we know it's in simplest form if the numerator and the denominator, they don't share any common factor other than 1. And in this case, 3 tenths is in simplest form. All right. If you want a little bit more practice with learning how to use cross-canceling when you're multiplying fractions, go ahead and check out one of my previous videos here and that'll help you get a better understanding of it. I explain it a little bit more and give you a little bit more practice. All right, let's take a look at another problem. This time we have 5 6 divided by 10. Now I know that 10 is not a mixed number, it's a whole number, but remember you can only divide a fraction by another fraction. So that means that I'm going to have to turn that number 10 into an improper fraction before I can start dividing. So let's bring down the 5, 6, let's bring down the division, and remember to turn a whole number into a fraction, all I have to do is put the 10 as the numerator and put a 1 in the denominator, and now 10 is written as a fraction. It's an improper fraction, but it's a fraction. All right, so now I have a fraction being divided by another fraction, so I can use my strategy of keep, change, and flip. So I'm going to keep 5, 6, I'm going to change my division to multiplication. I'm going to flip 10 over 1 to its reciprocal of 1 over 10. 
Now before I multiply, I'm going to look for those cross-canceling opportunities. I do see an opportunity with 5 and 10 because they share a common factor of 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1 and 10 divided by 5 is 2. The numerator of 1 and the diagonal denominator of 6, they don't share any common factors other than 1, so I'm just going to leave those alone. So now I'm ready to multiply my numerators, so 1 times 1 is 1. Then I'm going to multiply my denominators, 6 times 2 is 12. Then I'm going to check to see if it's in simplest form, and I know that it is because 1 and 12, they don't share any common factors other than 1. All right, I feel like you're doing a really good job with this, so let's keep going. All right, let's pull up our four easy steps again. It's nice to have something to reference to. So now this time we have two and four sevens divided by three sevens. And it might be a good idea, since this is a practice video, that if you wanna pause your video and solve the problem on your own, and then come back and see if you're correct, that actually might be a great way for you to practice on your own. If you wanna just stay and stay on the video with me, that's perfectly fine too. All right, so I need to change my mixed number of two and four sevenths into an improper fraction first. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply my denominator of seven to my whole number of two. So seven times two is 14, plus four is 18. So my improper fraction will be 18 over seven. Then I bring down my division and I bring down my three sevenths. Now I'm ready to use my keep, change, flip strategy since I have a pair of fractions. So I'm gonna keep 18 over seven, change division to multiplication, and then I'm gonna flip three over seven to its reciprocal of seven over three. And then I wanna look for the cross canceling opportunities because I'd really rather not multiply 18 times seven. So I look at 18 and three, and I do see that there's an opportunity there because they both share a common factor of three. So 18 divided by three is six, and three divided by three is one. And then I look at my sevens here, and I do see that they also share a common factor of seven. So seven divided by seven is one, and again, seven divided by seven is one. And do you see how much smaller my numbers are to multiply? Rather than multiplying 18 times seven in my numerators, I just need to multiply six times one, which is six, and my denominators are one times one, which is one. And we know that anytime I have an improper fraction with a denominator of one, that reduces to the same value as its numerator. So my numerator is six, so six over one is six. Great job, okay? Let's do one more practice problem. This time we have one and one eleventh divided by three fifths. So let's go ahead and change that mixed number to an improper fraction by multiplying 11 times one, which is 11, plus one is 12. So my improper fraction is 12 elevenths. Bring down my division, bring down my three fifths. Now I'm ready to do my keep, change, flip strategy. So keep 12 over 11 change division to multiplication, and flip three-fifths to its reciprocal of five over three. Then I'm gonna look for those cross-canceling opportunities, and I do see one with 12 and three. They share a common factor of three. So 12 divided by three is four, and three divided by three is one. Five and 11 do not share any common factors, so I'm just going to leave those alone. So now I'm ready to multiply my numerators, so four times five is 20, and 11 times one is 11. And again, I have an improper fraction here, and so in order to simplify this improper fraction, I'm going to need to divide 20 divided by 11. So I know 11 goes into 20 one time, and I have nine left over, or nine remaining. So the remainder of nine becomes the numerator, and the denominator of 11 does not change. So 20 elevenths in simplest form or simplified gives me one and nine elevenths. All right, great job with that. Okay, now let's take a look at the word problem. All right, so imagine that one serving of chili is one third of a cup and you make 20 and a half cups of chili for the neighborhood chili cook-off. How many people can you serve? Well, we know that this is going to be a division problem 
because number one, we're doing a video about practicing division with fractions and mixed numbers. But we also know this is a division problem because when I read it, if I try to draw a little picture of what I'm reading, it would look like this. So it's telling me that I made 20 and a half cups of chili. So if you could imagine we have this big pot that holds 20 and a half cups and you made chili there and you're going to take that chili and you're going to divide it up into servings of one third of a cup. So the picture helps you see the division problem. So the division problem is going to be 20 and a half divided by one third. And if you draw yourself a little picture sometimes, that helps you to know, well, which number comes first? Because a lot of times that's what's the most confusing. Do I do one third divided by 20 and a half? Or do you do 20 and a half divided by one third? Well, the first number in a division problem is always the number, the value that's being divided up. So since 20 and a half, that big pot of chili, is what's being divided up, that's why it's the first number in our division problem. So now that we've discovered what our division problem is, we're ready to solve. So I have a mixed number being divided with a fraction, and you know that mixed number has to be an improper fraction, so let's go ahead and do that now. So 2 times 20 is going to give me 40, plus 1 is 41. So my improper fraction will be 41 over 2. Bring down the division, bring down the one-third. Now, since I have a pair of fractions that are being divided, I can use the keep, change, flip strategy. So keep 41 over 2, change, division to multiplication, and flip 1 over 3 to its reciprocal of 3 over 1. Now I'm going to look for that cross-canceling opportunity. And unfortunately, I don't see one with 41 and 1. And I don't see one with 3 and 2. So in this case, because there is no opportunity to cross-cancel, I'm just going to have to multiply the numerator straight across. 41 times 3 is going to give me 123. And the denominator straight across, 2 times 1 is 2. Now I have this improper fraction of 123 over 2. So I'm going to divide 123 divided by 2. So 2 goes into 12 six times. Then I'm going to bring down that 3. And 2 goes into 3 one time with a remainder of 1. So the remainder becomes the numerator, and the denominator of 2 does not change. So 123 over 2 simplifies to 61 and a half. Now before I decide that I'm done with any word problem, I always make sure that I go back and read the question. So the question is, how many people can you serve? Well, I have a number of 61 and a half, and I don't think I've ever seen a half a person. So when I think about it, I have enough chili to serve 61 people, but I don't have enough chili to serve 62 people. So how many people can I serve? I can only serve 61 people. The remainder, I guess I'll have to keep and eat for myself a little bit later. All right, so I hope you found this practice video to be helpful, and if you did, make sure that you click that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe today. That support means the world to me, and I would just love it if you would just leave me a comment. I love to hear from my viewers, and until I see you next time, thank you so much for watching.